Well, hey, good afternoon or evening, whenever you're listening to this, really, everyone. My name is Angel Romero. I am your host here at Ballads and Brews. I'm all thrown off because we are pre-recording today's episode, which is totally okay, uh, because we're really excited. Uh, today, we get to visit. We are continuing uh, our message, our series of talking to our newest members of Topeka City Council. And so tonight, uh, we are getting to spend some time hanging out with Marcus Miller, City Council member for uh, the 6th City Council District here in Topeka. Marcus, thanks for hanging out with us. Man, it's a pleasure to be here. I've been watching this and, and listening to you for a long time, so I'm honored to be here. Oh, that that's a long, long time listener, first time guest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, those of you that are listening or watching, those of you that reside in the 6th City Council District, so that's close to the Central Topeka area, Washburn University area, those of you at Washburn University, Marcus is your City Council member. So, you know, Marcus, as we get started, can you tell folks just a little bit about yourself? Um, well, yeah, sure. Um, I'm a lifelong Topekan. I'm extremely proud of that. Um, have two children here. Um, one that is uh, right behind or wants to say hi right now. Come say hi real quick, son. Hi. Okay. <laughs> All right. Go back. Go back. Go back. Uh, so yeah. So raising a family here, but uh, you know, I've always been around this place for a long time. Like I said, for 40 years, and so I've seen a lot of things come and go. Um, and I know there's a lot of positive movement, so just happy to be here and, and represent District 6. Awesome. Your son may make the youngest guest that we've had on our podcast so far, so that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Well, yeah. and of course, I know you're you're a busy guy, so uh, of all the things that you do, <laughs> what made you decide, oh, in addition to that, I think I want to run for city council, too. <laughs> you know, honestly, it, um, it started with, with people asking me to do it um, years and years ago. People have been asking me to do this. And, and with everything that I do, Angel, you and I have known each other for a little long time. Whatever the people need, uh, if, I, if I have the time to do it, I'll make it work. Um, even if I don't have the time, I'll figure it out. Uh, and so that was, this was one of those things. It, you know, obviously, timing is everything. But it, when people ask for me to step up, um, said they want a representative that uh, could speak to their values and speak to the things that they wanted to see. Um, and that was a, an honest person that's going to tell you how like it is, whether you like it or love it, you know. Um, then that's why I decided to go ahead and do it. Um, you know, I honestly looked at it. I was like, why not? You know, what's it going to hurt? You know, if I lose, I lose, whatever. But, you know, if, uh, if there's people who want me to represent them, I'm happy to do it. Awesome. And yeah, what was that campaign experience like of y'all talking to voters, going door to door? Yeah, what, what was that experience like for, for you and the family? You know, honestly, it was amazing. Um, you know, it's something that came easy to me um, only because of how I kind of live my day to day. I love to talk to random people. I love to get introduced to new people um, and find out, you know, the more the, the diversity of the city that I already know we have. I just love to be able to actually be in the mix of it. Um, so going door to door was something that was perfectly fine with me because I, I love talking to new people all the time. Um, I feel like I grow the more people I talk to. So uh, so that, that part of it was easy. Timing of it was hard. You know, it was a really busy time. Try to handle a full time job and um, and do that uh, along with running around with my daughter, watching her play high school sports, running around with my son while he does the youth sports. And, you know, it was it was um, it was busy, but uh, it was worthwhile. That's that's awesome. I was gonna say, I know lots of calendaring and scheduling went into uh, making that making that all happen, making that all possible. Oh, one hundred percent. And and mistakes were made, you know. And and I'm not gonna sit here and say the mistakes aren't gonna be happen in the in the future. But um, you know, the the best of intent is there. So if if mistakes happen along the way, which mistakes happen on the campaign trail, uh, you know, that's okay. Okay, because I, I try to do the best I can, and if I fall short, that's okay. I wake up the next day and try to do better. Absolutely. And, you know, that's, that's what I think is, is hard sometimes for people. What people don't always recognize, you know, sometimes folks run for city council and they are retired or they don't have a full-time job. But when you're running as someone with a full-time job, that adds another layer into, into all of that. 100%. And, and there's a reason people usually my age don't go yeah. and don't take the time to do that. So yeah. I completely understand that. If I didn't have a wonderful wife to support me on that side of it, um, I don't think I would be able to do it. But she's so awesome, so, so extremely 
valuable to everything we do as a family and can handle a bunch of stuff without me being around. Um, you know, I couldn't do it without that. So the support system being there, understanding what it was going to take time commitment wise for me, um, having that support allowed me to be able to do it. So I get it. If you don't have time, it's hard to make that time. Yes. I 100% understand. Yes. I, I now have, I, I feel honestly that I have reached the max amount of time commitments I can make in 365 <laughs> days. So that's exactly where I'm at right now. That, that That's pretty fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and so then of course you do campaigning and you win, which is exciting. And, and so then that's you, awesome. Yeah. Yes. You then you then you're in. You get to join the the city council. Yeah, what has that experience been like? Is there anything that that surprised you uh, in your first few months, or anything that you didn't necessarily expect? Um, I don't know if I was surprised by anything. I came in, you know, I, I love to learn, and so I, I listened to my elders, listened to the people who have been doing it for a long time or have been in this position before. So a, a lot of the things that have come, I've expected. Um, I thought that it would take more time, to be quite honest with you. But I think that's only because I came in at, at a moment of the year that is not as busy as, you know, budget time. Because budget time from end of May all the way through September, that's our busiest time. Because that's our most important thing we have to do yeah. um, as a city council. So, um Coming in right now, allowing me to be able to kind of get the flow of the things before it starts to get really hectic. Um, I think that uh, it's perfect. Uh, you know, so uh, the first three months, it's, it's been a whirlwind. Don't get me wrong. A lot of information. I was just telling somebody yesterday, you know, it's, it's like a fire hose of information. <laughs> and right now, what I'm trying to do is trying to figure out what I need to actually dive into or what I need to just see it, recognize it and let it go by. Because sure. you can't just catch everything, I, especially with having a full time job, having a family, having coaching and doing all this other stuff. There's no way for me to be able to pay attention to every little thing as deep as whoever is doing it or is involved in it wants me to be involved in it. So got to pick and choose where your where your uh, time is spent. That's for sure. Absolutely. Well, and then you have also, uh, you know, another uh, fellow city council member that's new to Councilman Banks that's new to the city council also. So it's good to have another yes. another newbie in the process, too. Yeah, we have a, a extremely balanced council right now, you know, obviously very diverse with the different types of people we have. But just in the sense of experience and doing city council, we have some fresh new uh, thoughts and ideas coming from Banks and I, uh, some different perspectives, that, which I think are important. Um, and then we have the seasoned ones, um, and, and I'm going to say season because I know uh, uh, Miss Ortiz and Karen are, are watching, and so I want to make sure that they know I, I, that they they're not too old; they are just. Uh, experienced and seasoned and, and well-versed in what we're doing here. <laughs> experienced is good. I like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> well, you know, thinking, uh, you know, thinking about some of the, the issues that are floating around out there, of course, right now, am amongst many things that you all are doing, um, you guys are in the process of hiring a new city manager, which is a, an exciting step yeah. for for the city. Uh, so, you know, as you come into that process, you know, what are what are those things that are kind of important for you as you think about that decision and you look at the, the candidates that you're evaluating? You know, I think it, one of the things that I find important is that I, I think that a city manager who is going to be able to A, do the job, mm -hmm. but also be able to vibe with the city. Sure. Um, and, and what I mean by that is someone who is willing to be able to put the time in and getting to know the diverse area that we have here. Um, being able to speak to all cultures comfortably, um, speak to all different types of businesses, whether it be chains or whether it be the mom and pop stores. I think someone who has the ability to be able to, if they don't have the experience, have the wherewithal to be able to gain that knowledge um, and have the energy willing to put forth to to get all of that done. I think that's important in the city manager. Um, but obviously, also, you, you need to have your special. You're not going to have the ability to get one city manager who knows how to do everything at, at all because that's unrealistic. Um, but, you know, for someone who is, like I said, is willing to learn, I think that's an important trait for sure. Absolutely. And, you know, I think it was it was great to see uh, attending the, the other week, the open forum that they had for the public to meet the five finalists at, at that time. You know, it was great to see a really good cross section of the general public that came out to ask, I think, some really good questions I heard of, of the finalists. 
One hundred percent. Asked some good questions, gave some great energy, showed the city manager candidates that we, we are all encompassing. There's a different, a lot of different types of people, but they're all engaged. Um, and I, for one, just as like I said, being a lifelong Topekan, I love to see engagement like that um, because the more we're engaged as as a community, the better that city government is for you. So I love to see us involved like that. Absolutely. That's awesome. And as a reminder to those listening and watching, we are down to the final two uh, uh, candidates right now. And so we will uh, at some point soon find out who the final person is. I feel like it should be like American Idol. Like there should be like a, like a finale episode where <laughs> like there's like confetti and stuff that comes down when you announce the final winner. Just putting that out there. <laughs> you know, honestly, you're on to something there. You're on to something. Uh, we might be able to put something together. <laughs> There you go. Well, of course, you, know, you mentioned budgets earlier, and so a lot of things going on uh, with dollars and cents at the city council right now. Um, you, know, you all uh, recently uh, passed your the capital improvement plan, which we've mentioned a couple of times on this show um, before, which is a hugely important piece of uh, addressing infrastructure uh, in the community and, and, uh, and economic development and that sort of thing. And something that I'm sure you might have heard once or twice as you were talking to folks or people who had questions about Hotel Topeka. Um, and so What's that? that <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Right, I no right. Idea. Yeah, I'm sure. Never heard of that before, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so there was in the last CIP, um, yeah, there were funds included for, for Hotel Topeka, and the city is still in the process of, of their stewardship of, of the hotel. So, can you inform folks, you know, where kind of are we at that process? What's kind of the future look like for that right now? Well, you know, hopefully we can get somebody to purchase that pretty, uh, pretty soon. Um, you know, it's it's just one of those things to where we have to make sure that the asset is worthwhile for the new person to purchase. Um, and and the, the facility itself is definitely worthwhile. We just need to make sure that um, we have it in a place to where someone does want to take on um, the, the future purchase of it. Um, you know, we don't have a concrete timeline for the transition. But, um, you know, Rev Park International, who we contracted with to help us find a suitor for it, uh, put out a request for information for the hotel, um, and the city received two submissions. Um, we have not taken any action at this point with those submissions, but the uh, Topeka Development Corporation will be meeting again on May 7th, um, and we'll review and evaluate the offers there and, um, and see how quick of a time we can go after that. And, and for folks out there that are listening, a reminder that Topeka Development Corporation, so that was the, the board that was created in, in order to be able to, to oversee uh, this asset since the city itself couldn't, uh, couldn't hold that. They, they have a nonprofit, uh, the Topeka Development Corporation, for purposes of holding that, uh, that asset. And the board of that organization is the, is the city council. And so that's what we're talking about when we, uh, when we refer to that. And, you know, as you go through those discussions, are there any things in particular that you had to address with the hotel them to get it kind of in a condition where it can then be uh, where it would be best poised to to sell to a buyer. You know there are different amenities that the that the hotel has. One one that I have is the most, most important is the amount of rooms that it has. Mm -hmm. um, you know we don't have any other hotels like that here. Um, so with it being right next to the Stormont Bell Center, um, it was extremely important that we, we have this transition. Um, but, you know, when it comes to different infrastructure, some of the newer hotels around town may look very uh, modern, um, which our hotel has its modern parts, but some of the things can be stepped up a little bit. Um, so to make that attractive for some potential buyers, I think it's important for us to be able to invest in making it look a little, little more up to date um, because the, the amenity, this asset itself is wonderful. Um, it's just got to get up to 2024 not standards necessarily, but, you know, kind of get closer to what everything is looking like nowadays. Sure, absolutely. With, with the goal then of someone coming along and buying it up and then and then they can take it from there. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Move on. Absolutely. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> 
Well, speaking of accommodations too, you know, another thing, and of course we hear this in the nonprofit space a, a lot too, is is what a challenge housing is. And not only our community, but communities, of course, around the, the state and around the country of affordable, safe, affordable housing is a huge topic of discussion. And it's something that the city council has taken some action on uh, recently uh, in creating the housing trust fund. Um, and so that fund yes. was established explicitly for the purposes of furthering development of affordable housing in the community. And the city has made some initial investment in that fund um, and just curious if you could talk a little bit about kind of what the future of that looks like right now kind of where we're at with that fund yeah so that fund is sitting at about a million dollars right now um, the city itself has set aside 250,000 of that uh, for the fund um, and then in, in, in conjunction with other organizations builds it up to that million um, and with the land bank trust board of trustees that has been put in place um, we are taking that those next steps. Uh, there's some people who feel like we haven't done enough. But it was just because there was a lot of stuff happening in the background. Um, shout out to Spencer Duncan and Rianne. And, um, they have really been working hard on getting this put together. Uh, but there's just there's a process to it. Um, and if we, if we want to do it right um, and have the right um, people in place to be able to make it happen, um, it's important to people understand it's going to take some time to do so. But there's a lot being done on it. Um, and once we are able to fully staff the affordable housing uh, trust fund review committee, um, then, then we'll really be on on the next step and the next wave to be able to to um, have a accountable area and an accountable team to know that when stuff is coming in, what it's being used for, and that it's, there's no misuse of any dollars that that we receive in that fund, um, and also to make sure that it's going to be around for a while because you know a million dollars is cool. You know, to me, it's a lot of money. To me, it's, you know, I'm I'm a broke kid from Topeka, you know what I mean? And I'm always, so I'm always staying in that mindset. And so a million dollars to me is wild, but when it comes to housing, that money can go pretty quickly. Um, and so we don't want to put a bunch of work into putting committees together and, and getting this fund pushed out for them to just be empty. So we want to make sure that it's sustainable for years to come. Sure. And for folks who are uh, familiar, can you talk a little bit about kind of the concept of a land bank and what that looks like? I'm still working on that a lot myself, to be quite honest <laughs> sure. with you. Um, again, only only here 90 days. So how all of those things work is, is not necessarily because uh, I, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to when it comes to the council on how for a reason I was doing other stuff. Right. So, right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So now that we have that put together. Um, as we do more of it, I, I know I'll find out more information to be able to speak to it at a future date. Sure. Yeah, we know it is something that is an evolving issue and there's lots of work being done in that in that area. So I encourage folks to stay tuned yeah. as that uh, as that develops, um, because that will be a process um, that takes the entire community. Um, and so I'm looking forward to sharing more information um, as that becomes available um, and see what progress is being made there. Yeah. Well, before we wrap up, of course, because it's ballots and brews, we always have to end with a couple fun questions. Uh, okay, fun. all right. Uh, so I am curious. Uh, for those who don't know, so Marcus is also a coach at a couple different uh, different levels. He's coached a couple of different teams in and about our community. So I'm curious between thinking about your coaching gig and thinking about serving on the city council, which one's tougher? <laughs> which one do you think takes more effort? Wow, you know that's a great question, Angel. You know, dealing, oh, wow, that's a really good question. I don't know if there's one that's tougher because what I've learned in this first 90 days dealing with the public um, in this space is there's a lot of a wide range of emotions. Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to understand where people are coming from in those emotions, um, you know, when it comes to balancing their opinion with fact, you know, that part of it is extremely difficult to try to navigate. So um, then I'm, I'm trying to figure out why are they thinking this way? And well, I just gave them this fact and I just gave them this answer, but that wasn't good enough for them. They wanted it. So trying to understand that is extremely difficult. Um, but, you know, coaching teenagers and kids, that has this problem as well, not only because of just the, the children. That part actually is a little easier. You know, obviously, when you get into the teenagers, they get extremely emotional. And what I found in the last couple of years coaching girls, they they are extremely emotional. And I, I don't know what person I'm going to get day to day, but it's honestly more about the parents, mm -hmm. um, which that part makes it a little harder because 
parents may or may not have the basketball experience that I do or understand the game so that when certain things are happening and they don't understand why it's like, well, I can very easily show you why. And, but you're not going to be able to understand and, and get the concept of, Hey, yeah, my kid's just not working hard enough. Well, it's, it must be the coach's fault or it's done. No, it's not. Your kid just needs to work harder and do the things that they're supposed to be doing. Um, so parenting parents, while coaching, that part is probably harder than honestly what it is with the city. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I could, I could totally see that. Now, not being a parent, but just having observed, I could, I could, uh, I could believe that. <laughs> oh yeah, because because then you know, and, and and parents are a big reason of why some coaches don't want to coach and why refs don't want to ref is because kids, people are passionate about their kids, and I can't blame them. I totally understand. Um, but it's just important that if you're going to be speaking up and saying stuff, you better know what you're talking about. Right, yeah. You don't just make you don't just make yourself look bad. You make the kid look bad yeah. and you make the team look bad. And, and it's just it's all bad. Yeah. So parents don't be a fan parent. Hold your kids accountable. <laughs> if they do that, then everything works well. Absolutely. And be respectful, please. That's uh, the biggest thing. I just some of the, some of the things that that I, I see in here out there on, on the sports field. It's a little it's a little crazy sometimes. It's wild because and, and I always equate it and I tell parents all the time, would you want someone coming to your job mm. and screaming at you because you hit a a P instead of an L? OK, right. well, now you delete and fix it. Okay, but do you want somebody screaming in your ear talking about how you're horrible, a bad person, da 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 da? What I'm doing is trying to do my job. I'm going to make mistakes, things are going to happen, but all this extra stuff where you feel pressure of having to pay $15 to get into a game, well, you know what? That's part of the deal. Right. It, it is what it is. So take it and like it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, so after, of course, this is because it's Ballots and Brews, we also have to ask, you know, after a long day, either with city council business or coaching, you know, what do you have a favorite beverage that you like to unwind with at the end of the day? Um, you know, it, it depends. Um, I'm not. Well, a, I I, no, I will not because it's <laughs> sorry, my son. Anyway, I he I, I told the one person that I like a, a blue moon from time to time. And so now he thinks I drink blue moon every single day. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not the guess. It's not the case. I don't drink like that. Um, but shout out to Jay King and them over at the T Box because after every city council meeting, if it's before ten o'clock when we get done, I go over and have a debrief debrief beer sitting at the at, at the counter at the T Box. So yeah, shout out to Jake and them, and they do a good job over there. Uh, and and so whatever's on tap, I'll just try that. I'm not really a snob, but if I had a favorite beverage to go to, I'm going Blue Moon. And nice. I want my orange too. Now there I'm, 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 a, I'm man enough. Yeah, you can put fruit in my beer. I'm good with that. <laughs> Absolutely, especially when it's blue moon. You gotta have the orange. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah and a shout out to T Box. That is, if you have not been there, I encourage you all to check it out because it is a great place uh, right there. That's that's a great yeah post uh, city council uh, place to meet up. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's great. It's wonderful. That's awesome. Well, Marcus, thanks for making your inaugural appearance on our show today. And thanks for, for hanging out and talking with us a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but um, I, I, I always like to throw a little curveball to my interviewers uh, when, when they want me on. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions, if you don't mind. Sure. Okay. So first off, throw it right back to you. What's your favorite beverage after a long day? My favorite beverage? You know, I... There's a couple of cut blue moon is not far off. I do I do enjoy blue moon. You know, any I'm, I'm always game for a margarita. Also, uh, a margarita will always do a margarita on the rocks. Uh, okay. Or I will always go with either a margarita or a nice glass of wine. Will always <laughs> will always and, and rather it's white or red. Kind of depends on what kind of day I've had. <laughs> okay, understood. <laughs> Uh, okay, now are you a Cabernet type of guy or a Pinot Noir? I'm a Cabernet. Okay, all right, all right. And with all the flavor, all it's, of it. Okay, exactly. And again, depending on the day, there might be more yeah. Cab than not. <laughs> 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 the Cab is my go-to, but it. it's been a day. Like sometimes I'll do the like, like I like Moscato and like some of those fruity wines, and like I'll do that. But then if it's been if it's been a day, I'm gonna go straight to the Cab. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I like it. Okay. So 
My next question, Angel, because I have known you for so many years, you've been such a great person in this community. Um, you know, there's so many people that I've come across that I've never heard a bad thing about you, Angel. You're always so intelligent. You know what you're talking about in different arenas. You have in, uh, endless amounts of energy. I've always wondered why have you never run for city council or elected <laughs> official position? Oh my gosh! You know, I, to, I I love I love supporting other people, and so I love I, I love campaigns, and I I do love you know elections that sort of, and so I love helping people, um, and I think that that's kind of where I like to be. I like I like finding good people and supporting good folks, and kind of being that person that helps that helps people get there. And so I think that's okay. been been kind of my way, and I like to kind of make my impact through through other things, I guess. So, but I do like you yeah. know when they're when there are good folks running for for office it's fun to to support them and and get behind them and then i get to choose other avenues to to make differences understood understood <laughs> i can I, I can understand that that makes sense <laughs> For sure, yeah. for sure. I have great respect for people that run for public office because I've seen that behind the scenes of it. It is it's a lot of work, and it's you put your your whole self out there. It's it takes a lot to do yeah. that. Yeah, it, it really does. It really does, and I, and I could see how people would be scared of this process, one hundred percent. Because you know, everywhere you go, you know, people are looking at you, and it's like, well, are they looking? at me because of x y reason or do they they know me or they know of me and it's like so whenever i get that and, and i it's just always been the way i am anyway I, I like to engage random people you know i always make a point somebody i don't know makes make them smile so um if i come across you and i see you looking at me probably going to talk to you and find out what's up can i help you like what, what you need right. you all have been warned now <laughs> yeah yeah if you're looking at me we're going we're going to talk <laughs> i love it <laughs> oh yeah awesome. but thank you for having me angel i appreciate it man i i, I honestly I, I feel extremely special and blessed to be able to be on your program so thank you angel Absolutely. Well, thank you. And for folks out there listening, uh, be on the lookout for our schedule of next guests. So we have a couple different guests that we're going to be having as we close out our season, because believe it or not, we wrap up in May, which is y'all just like a month away. Uh, so we'll have a couple uh -huh. more shows uh, before we get all get all wrapped up. And speaking of summer just around the corner, a reminder that uh, tickets should soon be available for Tap That. Tap That is back uh, this summer on Saturday, June 8th. So those tickets should be coming out here pretty soon so be on the lookout for those uh, and as always you can find more information about tap that and all kinds of other really great events on the calendar it's located on 785.com huge shout out to 785 for being the uh the host of our program uh today so make sure to check out their events calendar on 785.com so thanks again everybody for listening and watching and we'll talk to you all later thanks everybody peace